Citizens Protection Act went before the House Rules Committee today. Now, it's an act that would ensure that no government entity could punish any health care provider, such as a nurse, who refused to assist in an abortion. Now, while this bill would not make abortions a thing of the past, it wouldn't render them illegal as they ought to be, it would protect an individual's, quote, right to choose not to be forced to take part in assisting a practice that is morally wrong and in other contexts would be defined as murder. God, well, should be anyway. Congresswoman Diane Black is a registered nurse and she wears her pro-life convictions on her sleeve. She's also the author of the Conscience Protection Act. She joins us now. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. You would think that even in the workplace, considering that this is such a serious issue, I mean, this is uh, ending a life, I and mean, we all understand science, it is amazing to me that these protections all aren't already in place, that a nurse could be punished for simply acting out her conscience if she did not want to take part in ending a completely viable life. Well, here's the problem, Dana, and I don't think you'll be surprised, neither will your listeners be surprised, that there are protections that are already in law. It's the Obama administration that doesn't want to abide by these protections, and so we're having to um, put something in the law once again to say very clearly that um, someone who is, has a deeply held belief should not be forced to violate that deeply held belief. So the church amendment, which um, was drafted and passed back in 1973, has that provision in it. Um, there's also the provision on the Weldon Amendment, which, as you know, we do each year on appropriation bill. However, this administration um, is not abiding by that because in the Department of HHS, they have the Office of um, Civil Rights, and they're deciding opposite of what has always been the tradition that you don't force someone who has that deeply held belief to participate in abortion. Oh my goodness. Well, I love that the division within that other government division, government on government on government. Uh, you also gave examples uh, in this as well. You talked about how back in March uh, of 2013, you wrote an op-ed on this. Uh, you met a pro-life operating room nurse named Kathy DiCarlo, and she was telling an audience about the time that she was forced by her employer, a hospital in New York, to assist in the abortion, ending the life of a 22-week preborn baby. And the hospital knew, was aware of her opposition, yet they not only threatened her job, they threatened her nursing license if she did not take part. That's correct. And that's what we're seeing happening throughout the entire country. It's not just there. It is in other parts of the country. Um, in my home state, of uh, Tennessee, Vanderbilt University had two nursing students that refused that they were not going to participate in abortions and they were going to be prohibited from participating in a nursing program. And so we're seeing this happen throughout the country and that is because this current administration, although the president was um, on record as saying that this is something that has, has been the case for a number of years where you could have uh, the Roe v. Wade decision and the conscience protection go side by side and it has worked, we see the Office of uh, Civil Rights making decisions that are contrary to that. And so we're making it very clear uh, that when you have a conscious protection that we're going to protect that as has been since uh, 1973 when Roe v. Wade was decided. Now this should be on the floor of the House tomorrow. Um, what is the support like for this? I think that you're going to see that we will have strong support within our conference. Uh, I would imagine we'll have a few pro-life Democrats who will support this as well. And there are some pro-choice Republicans who may or may not support this. I want to be very clear that this does nothing to change the law on abortions because that has been something that people have been saying, and especially in the Rules Committee today, that, oh, we're just going to let women die that are in an emergency <laughs> situation. That's there always the fallback argument. Whenever anyone tries to protect someone's freedom or anything, they say, oh, that, she's, that Diane Black, she's going to let women die in the streets. That's right. And as a nurse, and a nurse that has practiced for over 45 years, we don't let people die in the streets. We don't let someone who is in an emergency situation. People say to me, well, how do you make the decision? Do you save the mother? Do you save the baby? Mm. You know what we try to do? We save every life that we can save. That's what we take our pledge to do. That's what we do as health care providers. And so this doesn't change any of that. There is a law that's already on the books. It's the Emergency Medical um, Treatment Act that we have to abide by called EMTALA. 
and that doesn't change any of this. All this simply does is to reaffirm that if you or someone has a deeply held belief and you do not choose to participate in abortion, you cannot lose your job. It also does have one little provision in there as uh, Kathy DiCarlo was unable to take her case to court because she didn't have standing in court. This does give a right for that individual to go to court. And that's something that that's hasn't fantastic. been involved. That's a new piece. Well, we'll be watching this, and I dare say people need to call their lawmakers to encourage them to support this as well. Congresswoman Thanks. Diane Black, the beautiful state of Tennessee. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dana, for allowing me to come along. Of course.